Hello, I'm presenting this paper for ICASP 2020. The title is Hybrid Neural Parametric F0 Model for Singing Synthesis. My name is Jordi Bonada, and I co authored this paper together with Marlene Blau from the Music Technology Group from the Universitat Pompeu Fabra in Barcelona. First of all, a brief introduction. So, until recently, the most successful singing synthesizer were based on, on concatenative synthesis. But uh, recent DNN models have shown to provide uh, similar or even superior sound quality. To model expressive singing voice requires controlling many different aspects which are related to, to melody, to dynamics, rhythm, timbre, and among those, fundamental frequency is very relevant for naturalness and expressivity. So far, many different approaches have been proposed for modeling F0, but in particular, DNN-based methods require a large data set with both uh, phonetic annotations and musical annotations. What we propose in this work is the novel DNN-based uh, method that uses a parametric model which only requires phonetic annotations while still being able to uh, characterize singing styles using a small, a small data sets. Here we see a representation of our proposed model. Uh, on top is the training phase, in bottom the generation phase. In both cases, musical notes with lyrics and phonetic timings are input to the parameter prediction net, which is a recurrent network that predicts the parameters of the parametric model used in the F generation block to uh, predict the F0 curve. The loss functions compare the ground truth and predicted F0 curves so in this way, there's no explicit fitting of the parameters of the parametric model to ground truth parameter values. For training the model, we use data sets which are created in a semi-supervised way. We start with a set of recorded songs, and then we perform phonetic segmentation using the DAEM algorithm and applying some manual corrections. Then we compute a musical score by assigning vowel onsets to note onsets and using an F0 estimation algorithm. This way, the dataset finally consists of audios with phonetic segmentation and musical notes. Parametric model decomposes the F0 curve into a set of components, concretely baseline, microprosody, and vibrato. And these components are added together for generating the final curve. In this representation, from top to bottom, we can see the baseline in blue, the baseline and microprosody in orange, and in green, baseline, microprosody, and vibrato. The red stars indicate that uh, the baseline match note F0 at note centers. Then transition functions are used to connect consecutive note centers and are uh, characterized by sig point functions. And attack and releases are considered as connection to silence notes, so uh, are characterized by an attack and release interval. The microprosody is modeled with a Gaussian, which is assigned to its phoneme. And vibratos are characterized with a sinusoid with varying rate and gain and an initial phase. Vibratos start and end at transition centers, and their depth and rate values are obtained from linear interpolation of predicted parameters. The parameter prediction net is a network that receive the score and phonetic information and outputs the model parameters. It consists of two convolutional layers with a tonnage activation, followed by a bidirectional gate recurrent unit and two feedforward layers. 
The input is a phoneme-wise sequence of units which describe the score and phoneme segmentation and concretely include the interval between the previous and current notes, the phoneme family, the logarithm of notes and phoneme durations, and also a set of flags which indicate if we are at the end of phrase, it's a melisma, or it's the first, last, or main symbol in the note. Finally, the output is a phonetic-wise sequence of the model parameters. In this table, we can see the list of parameters predicted by the network and are divided into note-wise parameters and phoneme-wise parameters. The note-wise parameters uh, contain the node center, transition uh, parameters, attack release, and vibrato parameters. While the phoneme-wise parameters are uh, related to microprosody parameters. We can see the different activations and units used for each of the parameters. And I think it's important to say that it's really easy to add segmentation-based rules for the parameters predicted by the model. For example, if we look at the node center, the first parameter, uh, with the acti this activation, what we get is that we constrain the node center to be between the 5% and 100% of each node. Now let's talk about the loss function used for training the model. Since we don't have round truth values for the parametric model for the samples in the dataset, then we compute the loss function by comparing the ground truth F0 values and the F0 generated by the network. We divide the loss function into three components, which are the baseline and microprocessor loss, the tuning loss, and the vibrato loss. For computing the baseline plus microprocessor loss, we first segment the predicted and ground truth F0 curves into nodes. Then for each node, we subtract the mean and compute the L2 loss. This way, we put the focus in node-wise gestures and makes the loss roughly independent of errors in annotated node pizzas, particularly what we get is a loss that is independent of constants added to F0, baseline, or microprocessing components. On the other hand, uh, the detuning loss is the L2 distance between node F0 values and the value of baseline plus microprocessing at node center positions. As we said before, the vibrato is modeled with a sinusoid with time varying death and rates and an initial phase. So for computing the vibrato loss, we uh, first take the ground truth of zero and remove no transitions and uh, microprosody inflections by uh, removing the baseline and microprosody components. So we take this residual and compute the delta distance with the uh, predictive vibrato component. And uh, actually, we use the L2 between time derivatives uh, compute as with a sinusoidal convolutional kernel of 150 milliseconds. And it's important to say that the vibrato generated by the model during training it's not likely to match the phase of the target one. So for dealing with that, what we do is that we compute for each node the loss for 30 possible initial vibrato phases, equally spaced between 0 and 2 pi, and we take all those loss uh, values and we take the minimum loss, and that's the one we use for backpropagation and each mini batch. This way we help convergence to depth and rate predicted values, which are similar to those in the ground truth. And 
Additionally, we favor smooth uh, vibrato uh, depth and rate envelopes by having the L1 distance between consecutive predicted depth and rate parameter values. We have performed a set of experiments for evaluating the performance of the proposed model. Our focus is on the perceived naturalness and pleasantness of generated uh, F0 curves. And particularly, we compare our proposed parametric F0 model, TF0, to an autoregressive DNN baseline model. And in the test, we consider two cases, one where we train with several songs and the other where we train with just a single song. Uh, the test was an, a MOS listening test using uh, a publicly available data set and uh, users had to rate 12 phrases where for each phrase six stimuli were presented and all the examples for each phrase use the same timing and timbre and the reference was a performance driven synthesis and finally the uh, as target songs in the test, we use one uh, song by the same singer in the data set and uh, another song by a different singer. This table summarizes the results of the listening test. And uh, we can see that the proposed method was rated the best and closely followed by the same method when trained with a single song. Also, the ratings show how the autoregressive methods uh, greatly degrades its performance when trained with a uh, small amount of data. And one reason for that is that uh, F0 becomes often quite stable and tuned. Uh, finally, uh, sound examples are available online in the bottom link. As conclusions, we have proposed a hybrid neural parametric system that predicts F0 curves. We also perform a listening test and the results show the effectiveness of the proposed methods and improving over other autoregressive DNN systems. Uh, then as a caveat, the model parametrization introduces some constraints that probably make it not general enough to cover all singing specific styles or, or singing characteristics. So for future improvements, one would be to make uh, the parametric model more general. Also, also um, we might avoid the phonetic segmentation in the data set by using annotation block, or uh, we could uh, generate non sinusoidal vibrato, for example, using several harmonically related sinusoids. Or uh, also we think it might be interesting to add noise to predicted parameters and see if that uh, is useful for generating an alternative F0 curve, for example, for mixing different voices. So uh, that's all, thank you very much.